During the first week of my freshman year at the University of Iowa, I began to feel at ease with my roommate. He had a strong desire to rush a fraternity, and rush week was approaching. However, the parties were beginning on Thursday of the first week, before rush week officially started. My roommate did not want to attend the party alone because he felt it would be more difficult to meet people that way. He asked me to go with him, and I agreed, even though I had no interest in joining a fraternity. Nonetheless, I still intended to attend parties since I was attending a school known for its social events. My roommate planned to attend one frat party on Thursday and parties at various fraternity houses on Friday and Saturday. On Thursday night, we went to what I believe was one of the lowest ranked and possibly even an underground frat, but my roommate's reasoning was to have a backup frat in case he didn't get accepted into the more prestigious ones. The frat house was located in a distant and less desirable area downtown. As we approached the corner house, the thumping music and vehicles parked everywhere were the only indications that it was a frat house. The building itself looked like they settled for the first house they found. We knocked on the door, and a short chubby guy in a white t-shirt holding a solo cup greeted us. His shirt was stained with sweat under his armpits and mid-belly area. He welcomed us inside, and we entered a poorly lit room with approximately 50 guys crowded into the living room. The heat was unbearable, and to make matters worse, there were only two girls at the party, neither of whom was attractive. After talking to several overweight and unsociable foreigners for about 20 minutes, I signaled to my roommate that we should leave. However, a large group of guys by the door made us decide to stay a little longer to avoid the awkwardness of leaving early. I continued to drink the cheap beer they were serving and downed five cups before feeling a buzz. I was approached by a heavyset guy holding a tiny bottle in his hand. He smirked and handed it to me, saying, that'll get you shit-faced. I fake laughed and thanked him, expecting him to leave, but instead, he watched me as I drank it. The liquor was potent and equaled about two shots. The guy then started talking to me, and every time I tried to leave, he pulled me back into the conversation. Soon, things began to blur, and I felt dizzy, and the room grew darker. The last thing I remembered was waking up in a dark room, lying in a bed. I could hear muffled music from behind closed doors, so I knew I was still in the frat house. The room was very dim, but I could still make out some furniture and a small closet door. There was not much else to see, but even above the blaring music, I heard the sound of a plastic bag being crunched, as if someone had accidentally stepped on it. I bolted out of the room, ran down the stairs, and back to the overcrowded living room. I found my roommate and pushed him out the front door, past the group of guys still standing in a circle next to it. During the car ride back to campus, I told my roommate that I had been drugged. He almost called the cops, but I said it would be foolish and pointless. Then my roommate asked me an awkward question. Had I been taken advantage of? I didn't feel any pain, and my clothes were still on, so I assumed not. When I checked the time, I realized that I had only been out for about 10 minutes before waking up. Whatever the guy had given me must have been a dud or something. Thank God that was my only college experience of attending an underground ghetto frat party, and it remains to be my scariest life experience. During my sophomore year, I had a single dorm located in the corner of the floor. It was kind of secluded from the rest of the dorm rooms. Since it was in its own little section, you had to turn a corner to even see the door. It was nice because I could still talk with friends on my floor, invite people over to my room, and still have privacy when it was time to do homework or go to sleep. As I was studying for a bio exam a few weeks into the semester, I heard a faint tapping on my door that almost went unnoticed. I called out come in, but the door remained shut, curiosity getting the best of me. I got up to open the door, only to find no one there. I walked around the corner and down the hall to see if anyone was around, but there was nobody in sight. Feeling like someone was playing a prank on me, I went back to my bed, leaving the door open while I continued studying. The following night, just as I was about to go to bed, the tapping sound returned, 
Only this time it was louder, more like a knocking. I called out who's there, but there was no response, and the knocking stopped. Feeling uneasy, I quickly got out of bed and opened the door, but once again, there was nobody there. I ran to the corner to look down the main hallway of the floor, but it was empty. The next morning, I asked some of the other dorm residents if they were behind the knocking, but they all denied it. The following night, I was woken up after having been asleep for three hours by someone knocking on my door again, this time louder than ever before. I was struggling to decide whether to open the door or not, but with a sudden burst of courage, I got up and opened it. As expected, nobody was there, but this time, I sprinted down the narrow corridor that led to my room. When I turned the corner, I caught a glimpse of someone disappearing behind the far end of the hallway. I ran as fast as I could towards that person, and when I reached the spot where I had seen them, I found a door closing. It wasn't a dorm room but a bathroom. Feeling ready to confront whoever was playing this prank on me, I pushed the bathroom door open with force. The lights were off, but I turned them on, expecting to see someone hiding in there. However, the bathroom was empty. My first instinct was to check the two bathroom stalls, which were both closed. I got down on my hands and knees and looked under the stalls. Under one of the doors, I could see a pair of heavy black boots. Taking a deep breath, I pushed the stall door open. I was bewildered as I stared at the boots lying on the floor with no one in sight. Suddenly, I heard a chilling laughter that was not feminine or childlike, but rather that of an old, crazed man. I felt a wave of fear wash over me and ran back to my room, slamming the door shut. I crawled back into bed and frantically texted all my friends, but everyone was fast asleep. The knocking sound came again, but I ignored it, and after about 30 seconds, it stopped. The following day, I spoke to everyone on my floor, and no one had heard any knocking, and everyone denied any involvement in the prank. I cannot comprehend why someone would target me or who the man with the boots and the sinister laughter was, but the fact that he was an elderly man is unsettling. Stacy and I were roommates in college, and we got along pretty well. Despite her messiness, we had no issues and often shared things. Our dorm room had bunk beds, which was unusual for college, but it worked out since I was a lighter sleeper than Stacy. One night, something strange happened that I can't quite explain. We were both in the room studying, with me at my desk and Stacy in her bed. I had an important presentation the next day and was going over my notes, practicing my talking points out loud. Stacy listened and even offered to let me borrow one of her formal tops for the presentation since I didn't have any. After helping me review, she went back to her own studying and then went to sleep. I kept studying on my laptop in my top bunk, turned off my desk lamp as a courtesy. Stacy would snore occasionally, so when she began snoring, I knew she was asleep. I continued studying and rehearsing for another half hour to an hour before closing my laptop screen, placing it at the end of my bed, and then going to sleep. I woke up around 5 am when light was just barely starting to creep into the almost pitch black room. Through the windows I heard Stacy walking around below me. I groggily said Stacy's name and she replied with yes. I asked her if I could still borrow a nice top to wear for my presentation later that day and she went to open her closet door. I thanked her, and as I looked down at her, I saw her bend over in the closet. She got out and waved at me before leaving the dorm. The sound of the door closing snapped me out of my daze a bit more. I remembered grabbing my phone to check the time and for any notifications. It was around 5 a.m., and I wondered where Stacy could have been going. Most likely, it was to the bathroom like she often would in the middle of the night. The waving was just a bit unusual though. As I lay in the top bunk, I heard a snore coming from the lower bunk below me. At first, I thought it was my imagination. But then I looked down and saw Stacy sleeping. Confused, I peered over at the open closet door where I thought I saw her just a few moments ago. Unsure of what was happening, I quickly got out of bed and looked both ways down the hallway. But there was no one there. 
It had been at least five minutes since I heard the door close. I woke Stacy up and told her that someone had been in our room. It took her a moment to fully wake up and grasp the situation, but she quickly checked her closet for anything stolen. Luckily, nothing was missing, but I still have no idea who that person was or how they got into our room. I reported the incident to the university police, but their investigation and review of the security camera footage turned up nothing. I am positive it was not a hallucination or a dream. As a senior in college, last year, I had a lot of challenging engineering classes. I preferred to study in the library or classroom rather than my room, as I found it easier to focus. With finals week coming up, I decided to spend a Friday night studying in an engineering classroom. Although it wasn't the typical way to start the weekend, I had plans and wanted to finish my work beforehand. When I arrived at the engineering hall at around 9 p.m., I found the doors locked. Fortunately, I knew I could call a security guard who would unlock the doors for students with a valid ID. After gaining access to the building, I realized that I was the only person there. It felt eerie being in the dark building at night. I walked down one of the hallways, entered a classroom where I had previously attended lectures, turned on the light, and began working at one of the desks. I was deeply engrossed in my work having made significant progress for about an hour when I suddenly heard footsteps approaching. As I looked up, I noticed the classroom door opening and a stranger, a man wearing a red sweatshirt, jeans, and a baseball cap, walked in. He stood in the doorway and asked if I would mind if he also studied in the room. Although I felt slightly annoyed by his presence, as there were plenty of other available classrooms, I didn't want to come across as rude and agreed to his request. He placed his backpack on the first desk in the front and took a seat. I resumed my work at my desk, which was situated towards the back of the classroom, as it was where I felt most comfortable. After a few minutes, I looked up and noticed something peculiar. The man's backpack was still on the ground next to his desk, and he hadn't retrieved anything from it. He just sat there, staring straight ahead, without even glancing at his phone. After attempting to refocus on my work, I periodically glanced over at the man, but he remained motionless and continued to make me uneasy. As it was approaching 11 p.m. and my concentration was waning, I made the decision to pack up and leave. I shut my laptop, stowed it in my backpack along with my book, and headed towards the door. As I passed the man, I noticed that he was still sitting there, but I sensed his gaze following me as I exited the room. As I walked down the hallway towards the building's main entrance, I heard footsteps approaching, and my intuition told me it was the man. Since no one else had been in the room, I grew suspicious of his behavior and hastened my pace. Upon reaching the parking lot, I saw only one other car aside from mine, and the man emerged from the building and headed towards it. I quickly drove off towards my apartment, which was a mere five-minute drive away and located a few blocks outside the campus. To my surprise, the man followed me in his car. After parking my car in my designated spot, I exited and noticed that the man's car was parked a few spaces away from mine, but he remained inside. Though I still didn't know his intentions, seeing him stay inside his car made me feel somewhat relieved. I proceeded to enter my apartment and made my way to the window, where I could watch the man's movements. Since there were only eight units in the building and I had seen all the other residents over the year, I knew that the man did not live there. Additionally, I had never seen his car before. The man remained in his car with the lights on for an extended period, so much so that even as I was lying in bed about to fall asleep, I saw that he was still there. By that time, it was around 2 a.m. and I eventually drifted off. The next morning, when I looked out the window, the man's car was no longer there, which was a relief. However, upon stepping outside, I discovered noticeable scratches and small dents on the outside of my front door, near where the lock was located, as well as on the side of the door where it opened. These damages were not there before, leading me to believe that the man attempted to break into my apartment while I was asleep. I always wondered who he was and what motivated him to do such a thing. 
Thanks for watching. If you're a horror lover, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a spine tingling story. Don't forget to leave a comment down below with your favorite horror story or idea for future videos.